Imagine hanging a painting upside down in a gallery and nobody noticing for decades. Critics write essays, tourists take photos, children doodle copies, all while the artwork is staring at the floor. That's basically what paleontologists did with one of the strangest fossils ever dug out of rock. Back in 1910, Charles Doolittle Walcott pulled a thumb-sized creature from the Burgess Shale. Soft-bodied, spines on its back, legs that looked like noodles, even among the Cambrian's freak show of five-eyed shrimp and nightmare worms, this thing stood out. One scientist later called it the weirdo of weirdos. But here's the kicker. For almost 50 years, the scientific community proudly reconstructed it completely wrong, literally upside down, walking on its spines, eating with its legs. This is the story of hallucigenia the Cambrian worm that punked science for half a century. A creature with the name of a hallucination, the look of a bad sketchbook doodle, and the history of an art exhibit hung the wrong way round. And if fossils could laugh, this one's been cackling at us since the day we cracked open that shale. Our story starts in the summer of 1910, high up in the Canadian Rockies, where geologist Charles Doolittle Walcott was busy doing what he did best finding fossils that would terrify museum archivists for the next hundred years. Walcott was the man who discovered the Burgess Shale, a deposit so rich in soft-bodied animals that it turned paleontology from dinosaurs with cool teeth into behold nature's acid trip. Now, most Cambrian fossils looked strange enough. Worms with armor, shrimp with five eyes, things that could have doubled as props from a low-budget sci-fi movie. But tucked away in Walcott's collection was a tiny, worm-like creature, only one to five centimeters long, about the size of a paperclip, covered in stiff spines and squishy legs. He gave it the uninspired label Canadia Sparsa in 1911, filing it under Marine Worm, because, frankly, what else could you call a spiny noodle in 1911? And then he put it in a drawer, literally, for decades. That's the thing about Burgess Shale fossils. Walcott collected tens of thousands of them, shipped them back east, and catalogued them with the enthusiasm of a man trying to alphabetize chaos. So Hallucigenia, though it wasn't called that yet, sat in the Smithsonian, silent, waiting. For over 60 years, nobody touched it. No dramatic debates, no flashy reconstructions, just a spiky worm fossil hiding in a cabinet while the world outside moved on with two world wars, jazz music, and television. It's almost comical. This was one of the strangest animals to ever crawl across Earth, and for more than half a century, it was reduced to a line in a dusty catalogue. A fossil so bizarre it could have rewritten textbooks if only anyone had looked at it long enough. But in the 1970s, a young Cambridge graduate student named Simon Conway Morris would open that drawer and pull the weirdo back into the spotlight. And when he did, he turned the fossil world upside down. Literally. By the 1970s, the Burgess Shale was being re-examined by a new generation of paleontologists people who looked at the spiky noodles in Walcott's drawers and thought, what the hell is this? Enter Simon Conway Morris, a bright-eyed Cambridge graduate student who, in 1977, cracked open the fossil trays and resurrected Walcott's forgotten worm. And what he saw made him question everything. Each specimen was barely a few centimeters long, but it looked like evolution had assembled it out of spare parts a sausage-shaped body, seven pairs of long, rigid spines sticking out from one side like skewers on a kebab, and dangling from the other side, seven pairs of soft, tentacle-like limbs, each ending in a delicate little blob. To Conway Morris, it didn't fit into any known group. No head, no obvious mouth, no clear front or back. Just chaos in fossil form. So what did he do? He reconstructed it in the only way that made sense at the time, which is to say, completely wrong. He flipped it upside down, put the spines on the bottom like legs, 
and decided those floppy tentacles sticking up were actually feeding tubes with little mouths at the ends. Picture a creature tiptoeing across the Cambrian seafloor on seven pairs of needle-like stilts while waving spaghetti noodles in the water above its body to catch food. It was, without exaggeration, one of the most absurd reconstructions in the history of paleontology. When Conway Morris first unveiled his drawing, colleagues reportedly burst out laughing. Not because he was wrong, nobody knew that yet, but because the thing looked like something Dr. Seuss doodled during a fever dream. And yet, with a straight, academic face, Conway Morris published it under a brand new name, Hallucigenia, meaning Wandering Dream of the Mind, which honestly was the most accurate thing about his reconstruction. For the next decade, textbooks and museum dioramas proudly displayed Hallucigenia as a spiny worm balancing on stilts, a Cambrian carnival act, a bad Ikea build. Science had embraced its upside-down hallucination, and nobody thought to ask if maybe, just maybe, the creature wasn't doing a permanent handstand. But in the 1990s, paleontologists in China would stumble on new fossils that flipped the whole story right back around. By the late 1980s, paleontologists had a nagging feeling that something wasn't adding up with hallucigenia. Sure, the spiny stilts drawing had become iconic, but it never really worked. How could an animal walk on stiff spikes with no joints? Why would its feeding tube sprout out of its back instead of, you know, anywhere near a mouth? It was the evolutionary equivalent of designing a car with the wheels on the roof. The answer came from half a world away. In 1991, Swedish paleontologist Lars Ramskold and Chinese paleontologist Ho Xian Guang were studying fossils from the Chengjiang Biota in Yunnan, China, another Cambrian treasure trove, even older than the Burgess Shale. Among the strange creatures preserved, there was one that looked suspiciously familiar, a small worm-like animal with paired spines and paired legs. Except this one was clearly preserved right side up. Suddenly, it all clicked. Hallucigenia hadn't been walking on spikes like some deranged circus act. The spikes were on its back, for defense, like a prehistoric porcupine. And those floppy tentacles weren't weird feeding arms. They were legs, complete with tiny claws at the ends for walking. Conway Morris's infamous version? Completely upside down. Ramskold and Howe's 1991 paper effectively flipped the fossil back over. And just like that, hallucigenia went from surreal nightmare to something that, while still deeply weird, at least made biological sense. A soft-bodied worm, a few centimeters long, crawling on stubby legs, bristling with dorsal spines to keep predators away. More caterpillar from hell than cosmic hallucination. But the embarrassment didn't end there. Flipping the animal over solved one mystery, but it created another. Which end was the head? Was it the blunt side? The pointy side? Neither end showed an obvious face. Even right side up, Hallucigenia was still trolling paleontologists, as if to say, nice try, but you're not done yet. That mystery would hang around for decades until new technology finally revealed the creature's tiny eyes and nightmare mouth. But in 1991, just proving that hallucigenia had been upside down for 50 years was enough of a bombshell. Paleontology had just been handed one of the biggest oops moments in its history. For decades, we had the animal upside down. And now, even when corrected, paleontologists were still scratching their heads, or rather, trying to find hallucigenias. On one end of the body was a blunt, rounded tip. On the other was a narrower point that sometimes looked like it was leaking fossilized guts. Neither end showed obvious features like eyes or a mouth. To make matters worse, early Burgess Shale fossils were tiny and poorly preserved, so the extremities were often just smudges in rock. In Conway, Morris's original upside-down model, he'd picked the blunt end as the head and imagined it sprouting feeding tentacles. But now that the legs were confirmed as legs, that interpretation collapsed. 
What paleontologists were left with was a crawling pincushion with no face, the biological equivalent of a mannequin with both ends shaved off. Some argued the blunt end was the head, because it looked sturdier. Others swore the pointy end was the head, suggesting those gut leaks were just decayed mouth parts. A few even joked that hallucigenia might not have had a head at all, just a tube that ate and excreted from the same hole which is evolution's way of saying, look, plumbing is hard. For years, papers bounced back and forth, each with painstaking diagrams of smudgy fossils that looked like Rorschach tests. One expert would see a mouth, another would see rotting intestines, one group would insist there were eyes, another would say, nope, just artifacts in the shale. By the early 2000s, hallucigenia's missing head had become almost legendary in paleontology circles. It was like the world's most frustrating Where's Waldo puzzle, except Waldo was two millimeters wide and 508 million years dead. The mystery dragged on until 2015, when new technology finally settled the debate once and for all, and gave us a face that nobody expected. After decades of squinting at blurry fossils and arguing over which end was up, Science finally got a break in 2015. Enter paleontologists Martin Smith and Jean-Bernard Caron, who decided enough was enough. Instead of arguing over smudges, they pulled out the heavy artillery, high-powered electron microscopes, and freshly prepared Burgess Shale specimens. And what they found was nightmare fuel in miniature. On the narrow end of hallucigenia, the one many had dismissed as just a tale, they spotted two tiny dark dots. Eyes. Not compound insect-style eyes, just simple light detectors, but enough to prove. This was the head. The missing face had finally been located. And right below those eyes? A circular mouth opening, ringed with spiky teeth-like spines. Worse yet, inside the throat itself were rows of needle-like teeth, pointing inward like a conveyor belt of dental nightmares. Imagine a pinky-sized vacuum cleaner nozzle, armed with barbs to make sure once food went in, it didn't come out. Congratulations, paleontology. After 50 years of turning this animal upside down, you've now given it a face, and it looks like something out of a horror movie. But here's the kicker. Despite its hardware, hallucigenia probably wasn't a fierce predator. Those throat teeth and spiny lips were more likely used to suck in soft food or organic muck from the Cambrian seafloor. Think less monster hunter and more slimy rumba with spikes. Scientists even suggested it may have clung to sponges with its claws while slurping them like a milkshake. Still, the discovery was a turning point. For the first time since Walcott plucked it from the Burgess Shale in 1910, Hallucigenia wasn't just a faceless joke. It was a real, defined organism. Head, eyes, mouth, spines, legs. Creepy, yes, but no longer just a hallucination. And with that face, paleontologists could finally place it where it belonged. Not a loner, not an alien, but a distant relative of modern velvet worms. Velvet worms are oddballs themselves, They've got soft, tubular bodies, stubby little legs with claws, and their claim to fame is that they hunt insects by shooting streams of glue-like slime out of their heads like Spider-Man. Now imagine a Cambrian version of that, stripped down, spikier, and just a few centimeters long, and you've got hallucigenia. Genetic and anatomical studies put both animals inside a larger evolutionary club called Ectisozoa, the molting animals. That's a huge lineage that includes arthropods, insects, spiders, crustaceans, nematodes, roundworms, tardigrades, the famous water bears, velvet worms, and even the wonderfully named priapulid worms, also known as penis worms. Yes, that's their actual scientific nickname. And yes, they too date back to the Cambrian. So hallucigenia, the tiny worm that baffled science for decades, wasn't alone at all. It was part of the same great family tree that produced cockroaches, lobsters, and tardigrades that can survive in space. 
It was just the weird cousin who showed up to the reunion wearing spines and a throat full of teeth. By the mid-2010s, the picture was complete. Hallucigenia lived about 508 million years ago in the Cambrian seas of what's now British Columbia. It was two to five centimeters long, shorter than a golf tee. It had seven pairs of legs with tiny claws and seven pairs of dorsal spines for defense. Its head bore simple eyes and a toothy, spiny mouth for sucking up food. Not so much a hallucination anymore, just a humble lobopodian, one of the many experiments life ran during the Cambrian explosion. But here's the thing, even once science got it right, hallucigenia still had the last laugh. Because its legacy isn't just about anatomy or classification, it's about how utterly, embarrassingly wrong we humans can be. For decades, when you step back, Hallucigenia isn't terrifying because of its spines or its throat full of teeth. It's terrifying because of how badly it exposed our own limits. For decades, the smartest people in the room stared at this fossil and confidently described something that never existed. A creature balancing on stilts, waving noodles out of its back. Entire textbooks, museum models, and diagrams were drawn from an illusion. That's the real punchline. This worm didn't just confuse science, it humiliated it. Quietly, patiently, for almost 50 years. And that's why hallucigenia endures. Not because it was large or powerful or even particularly important in its ecosystem, but because it made fools of us all. It's the fossil equivalent of a prankster who hides your glasses while you search for them on your own face. The Cambrian was full of monsters, but this one didn't need size or strength to haunt us. All it needed was ambiguity. Seven pairs of legs, seven pairs of spines, and a face so small it might as well have been invisible. That was enough to turn science upside down, literally. So if you ever doubt evolution's sense of humor, remember hallucigenia, a creature so small you could crush it between your fingers. And yet it managed to leave paleontology doubled over, laughing at itself. 